What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So this is the deal. Today's been kind of productive. Um, I had the easy go gas powered golf cart on marketplace for like 1800. Had a guy come by, looked at it, offered me 1500 for it. He took it, it's gone. And this afternoon, while the kids was outside playing and I was just scrolling marketplace, this right here golf cart popped up. I just got home with it. It's kind of dark out here. Uh, even underneath that light over there is dark. So I'm gonna get it off the trailer, bring it into the shop here. I'm gonna go over it. I really bought it just for the lift kit. I wanna use that in a different project. I'm, you guys probably already know what I wanna use it for and it's to carry y'all. But anyways, with that being said, I got the garage cleared out. We're gonna unload it, bring it into the garage. I'm gonna show you exactly what I got and my plans for it. So this is the golf cart here. This is a 2003 club car DS. It says AQ0341. That's what the dash looks like and the pedals and looks like they've painted over the serial number. I think that says B1. So these are February 2021 batteries. I uh, have put a meter on them and they're reading about eight volts each. We have a solenoid back there. Wiring looks rough. I'm not sure if the controller works or not. So it's kind of hard to see from this angle here. And the color of that motor, I'll come up top, it's actually a red motor. So that might be an admiral motor. I believe that's what the uh, label says there. Yeah. So I, I bought it just like this. The reason I bought it like this is because of the wheels and tires. The tires got plenty of tread on them. And it has an all sports 10 inch lift kit on there. So that's the rear section of it. And come up here to the front. This is the front section. And I was thinking really and truly, if we could put this lift kit on the carry all 17 with a dump bed on it, I would like to do that. Even though this isn't designed for front brakes. I also got the back seat with it. It's still out there. And I got an extended roof that's out there. So the seat backs, they look good. Um, the front seat, single seat, it looks good. The floorboard, it looks good, but this is what I got. I think the first thing to do is let's double check these batteries here on the voltage and see if we can get some kind of charger going to charge these batteries. All right, so it's the next morning. Charger's still going. It's like almost at the end of the cycle, about four amps. So it's 56.7, 56.8 volts. I don't see any acid or water boiling out of the caps, which is a pretty good sign, even though we had to put water in there last night. And I think today we're gonna see if we can um, fix some of this wiring here. Even though it's not in the split loom, we're gonna have to see where it goes, maybe with the schematics and uh, see if we can still use it, so. I went ahead and took the batteries off charge manually because it was stuck around reading like four amps on the um, charging, uh, meter there so the batteries are starting to gurgle just a little bit sitting but the meter's reading 54.6 volts right now on these batteries the batteries look to be in decent shape I'm not saying that they are in decent shape but they look to be um, so i went ahead and uh, just removed the charger for right now i'm gonna go ahead and get this body taken off of here clean up this right here floorboard a little bit and pick you back up, we need to go over the wiring and see if we can wire this thing and get it running at least, or see what's wrong in the next step. All right, so I went ahead and removed the body off, got the floorboard kind of cleared out a little bit here. This is a mess of wires, okay? And what I've done here is I've looked up on the internet, 2003 Club Car DS uh, wiring schematic, okay? Now I went ahead and printed off the schematic and I have it right here on the bench. 
This right here is my schematic. Now on the bottom of the schematic here is showing you wire color codes here. And I went ahead and matched all of these color codes there to these wires here. Okay, so we know that we have a 2003 uh, DS and the wiring harness matches the schematics um, on that sheet of paper. Anyways, what I'm gonna try to do now is get my schematics and we're gonna run through these wires and see you know, what we have. We have things like this right here that's been cut. Look at this right here, solenoid. It's got your diode here. This wire doesn't look good. We're not wire, but cable. It needs to be a resistor up there, not a diode at the top, but we got a lot of stuff to go through here. We need to make sure that the speed sensor uh, wiring is right. We also got to make sure the connections are good as well. So what I would probably do is clip these and put some new butt connectors on there with the heat shrink just so I know that I touched them, okay? You got things like this right here. Okay, that was probably a connector of some sort running somewhere here. So there's a lot that we're gonna have to do to get this right here um, harness put back together. And then even though we get the harness put back together, your controller may be bad, the solenoid may be bad, the motor may be bad. All three of them could be bad, never know. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so the wire harness that's going to the speed sensor on the side of the motor went ahead and put black loom on that, taped it at the front, taped it at the back, took the old butt connectors off, put new butt connectors on there with the heat shrink technology, Look at my wire colors, red, light green, black and white. Okay, going to the same connector here. And it says the same thing on my schematics here. Red, light green, black and white. That's going down into the side of the motor. So those three wires there, those are done now. And what we're gonna do is go into the next uh, set of wires here. I may start uh, at the solenoid here because the solenoid sends power through the, is it the pink wire there that goes up to the tow run switch. So we might have to check to make sure that pink wire is running up there to the tow run switch. And then follow that wire down, that light green wire, and it comes over to this sonic weld here and it splits off into six different wires. One of the wires goes up to the green of the switch. One of the wires goes up red to the positive of the reverse buzzer. We're not gonna use the reverse buzzer. We're not gonna use the battery warning light. Then you got orange that comes down here. Orange feeds the uh, FNR switch, main power input. Then you got white and gray. White goes down to your onboard computer. Gray goes down into the main connector of the harness here. So we have a lot to do, but it's, you know, showing you how to do it by getting one of these right here um, schematics was found online and I just right clicked and saved it to my desktop. I um, printed it out. That's exactly what it looks like there. And that's exactly how I uh, go through golf carts all the time. You know, I'm sure that people has been working on these things for, you know, 20 years can remember every single wire color and where they go. I'm not that good yet, but this is exactly how I do things. All right. So let's start with the solenoid real quick here and take a good, hard, long look at that there. We're gonna go ahead and reference the solenoid in the picture here. So you have your main red wire coming in from the battery, and that's there. It's, you know, it's not red, but this right here's the wire here going to the battery. This is the yellow wire or yellow um, cable going from the solenoid down into B positive of your controller. That's B positive. B positive leaves and should go down to A1 and it does. Look at that, they have put regular, smaller, mm. anyways, I mean, that might work, but we might replace that anyways. Um, so the heavy duty cabling on the solenoid into the controller there in that one run is correct. All right, let's look back at our schematics again here and it says pink 
The pink wire is getting power from the batteries and carrying pink all the way up to the tow run switch. There's no pink there. This is a red and this red is coming down to this red going into this right here OBC connector, but it is also connected with a, a house connector and that's pink. There's a pink wire there. So maybe that pink wire has ran to the tow run switch. See up here, it says pink ran into a, a sonic weld there. That red wire came down and it's going into the OBC. So this right here is right, but that pink wire there uh, is cut. Let's see if there's a pink wire on the uh, tow run switch here, up here. Sorry if this video is shaky. I'm just trying to shoot on the fly here. We do have a pink wire here. And so we're gonna connect this pink wire here from the tow run switch back to the pink and red wire down there. All right, so the pinkish red wire coming off the solenoid there is hooked to the pink wire here going to the tow run switch into the OBC. I used a blue butt connector with the heat shrink built into it. So that's now connected. We need to go back to the tow run switch and look what it's coming out as. So to run switch here, it's coming out as light green. The light green's coming down and it's coming in. And this is what you call a sonic weld. So basically you just have uh, a bunch of wires connected together and they're different colors. And we need to go and see where all of these right here wires go to and their functions on the schematic. So the sonic weld is this one right here. So we know that the tow run switch goes in pink. It comes out light green. We follow it out all the way down. This right here is the sonic weld. So we know that green is gonna to go to the key switch. All right, so in this green wire here, I had about two feet of this right here. So I cut a foot of it off. I put a buck connector there, ran this black wire here. All right, green wires ran. Then red is going to the reverse buzzer. We're not gonna use the reverse buzzer. For the reverse buzzer positive, capped off the red from the sonic well there. Then you got orange that comes down here. Orange feeds the uh, FNR switch, main power input. All right, the orange is going to a black wire because I have black wire here, I have blue wire. This is going to, the black wire here is now gonna be my FNR switch input for power. The white one is coming down and going to the OBC computer, and the gray is coming down and going into the controller main harness. Your white wire here is coming down wrapping and going into the six pin connector of the OBC. And then you got gray and white. Even though it's gray and white, the schematics are showing uh, gray and the only gray wire on this right here connector is pin nine. That's right beside the pin 10, which is tan. So this one is gonna get butt connected to this one here. And that one sonic weld will be done. All right, so check this out. You have green, white, blue, yellow, red, and looks to be brown, solid brown, right? On the other side of that connector is brown and white or gray and white. And over time, this right here could age and discolor, okay? So, I was, you know, you go from brown to brown and white or gray and white. Going back to the schematics here, it's coming out. There's brown and white. Brown and white keep going up. It attaches to ground of the battery warning light. So, we're not going to use the battery warning light. We're gonna go ahead and cap that right there off. Capped off here, so that's the brown and white. I know it still looks like a dog mess, I get that. This right here, sonic weld is done. That was the six wires we were worrying about here that we just mentioned. We got all of those ran and done, okay? We're not worried about this battery warning light or the reverse buzzer. That's why we capped off the 
red wire on the sonic weld and we capped off the brown and brown and white wire on the six pin connector here. We're not worried about that. Next, we need to worry about this blue wire here leaving the key switch. And it's gonna leave the key switch and it's going down to another sonic weld. So that sonic weld is part of the key switch coming input there. There's also going to be a blue wire that's gonna get hooked to the M core or the motor controller output regulator. You're gonna have a light blue wire that's gonna run around. The light blue wire comes into the solenoid here. And if you look down here, we have that light blue wire there and it's going into the uh, uh, sonic weld there. And it also has a tan wire coming out. The tan wire is already going into the harness here. And on this right here, it shows that the sonic weld here is going down to the tan and into the harness. So we need to be sure to connect the M core to the key switch on that blue wire and there is a blue wire right here, and that's going towards the front, so we need to trace that and see where it goes. All right, so check this out. That's the blue wire here, right? And it's leading down there, and it's going to the M core. There's also another blue wire here on, on the other side, of the, or the same side of the sonic weld, and this is the wire that's gonna go to the key switch. And that blue wire was hooked to this orange and white wire here, so or brown and white. So this wire here, we need to carry it to the key switch. All right, so we have a few more wires to tend to here on the harness. We have a blue with a white stripe that's being butt connected and that's going up to the solenoid there. It's a little long, we might shorten that, replace that butt connector just so we know that it's good. And you have a blue and a brown wire that goes back to the controller and it tells it which um, uh, motion to go, forward or reverse. So we have a blue, we have an orange and white, and we have a brown. So that blue and brown is gonna go up there for the FNR switch. Then we need to figure out what this orange and white wire here is. Just pulled out my schematics and I found the orange white. It's the reverse buzzer negative. And since we're not gonna use reverse buzzer, we can take this orange and white wire here uh, we'll probably just wrap it up and put a butt connector on it so we don't have to use that. All right, guys, everything is now ran. Everything on this harness is done. Still need to clean it all up. Probably zip tie it, wire tie it, maybe even put some split loom on it. Everything's done here. I want to see if the golf cart will turn on or turn off. Let's see if the solenoid's any good. We might have to order a solenoid still. Don't know if the controller's any good. Don't even know if the motor's any good. So. Still a long way to go, but um, I know that wiring is good because, well, we followed the schematics on it, got everything wired up. A lot of it was going different places where it wasn't supposed to be going. Well, I think we got that under control now. So I'm gonna probably set you guys down. Do not have a key switch right there. I'm just gonna strip those back, connect them together. As far as the tow run switch, uh, there's a switch there, the F and R switch. I'm waiting on one to come in, so we're just gonna strip those back and uh, touch them together to see if all of that hooks up and runs well. I went ahead and made sure all of these heavy duty cables are going into the right spot, and they are. Onto the motor and everything, just these two smaller cables here are, uh, I don't know, just maybe a little janky about that still, but. Let's see if it'll still know to at least turn on or off. I wonder if somebody didn't put a diode there and it needed to be a resistor. And if that's the case, well, um, you know, the power is not going to jump through a diode because that's there. The resistor is there just to kind of like a soft load the controller. All right, so I got you pictured at the solenoid here. I know I need a resistor to go on there because what was on there was a diode and the diode goes up front. There's a diode there. I have a uh, alligator clip attached to this side of the solenoid here. I want to make sure the solenoid clicks. And it does. Next thing I want to do is make sure it has continuity in it while it clicks. So.
All right, solenoid works. It's sending continuity through the big lugs there. We don't need to purchase a solenoid. So we know that works. We do need to purchase a resistor to go in there since we already have the diode. So that's a good sign so far. All right, so it's time to start testing. And I've already started testing, so I want to run all of this by you and show you exactly what I'm doing here. This red wire here, remember, it hooks up to that red wire there. That pink wire sends power to the tow run switch. So once we put it in run, now we should have 48 volts and that, that tow run switch comes down green. It comes down green into the big sonic weld down there. This one right here, okay? This side right here runs to the key switch input here, all right? So we can go ahead and make sure we have um, power there. Put this right here, there. Showing 52 volts there. So we do have power there, okay? So that's good. Now we need to make sure we have power leaving the key switch here. Now it's going to the other sonic weld, which is this one right here. Now this one sends uh, 48 volts out through that little, one little blue wire there. There's two blue wires right here coming in. One is the input, one's output. The output wire goes to the M core. The M core then sends power to this green wire right here, okay? So once we hook the meter up to it and press the pedal, we should have 51 volts. So I got my meter hooked up to the ground of my battery. I'm gonna come in here, put us on this green wire here. We shouldn't have any voltage right yet, and we don't until we hit the pedal. The pedal's then gonna send voltage through there to tell the controller, you know, that's going on. It's just clicked. We have 51.2 volts there. That's good. Now on this same sonic weld, we have a brown wire coming off. The brown wire's going into the plug right here. We should automatically have 51.2 volts there. And we do 51.1, 51.2. So we have voltage there, right? We have one more wire, blue connector here on this right here. Same sonic weld does not have any power. See there? So something is wrong either in the sonic weld or somewhere else. So I think we got another problem solved and it's this blue wire here that attaches to the solenoid. We now have power on it. See, it says 51 volts there, now power. So the sonic weld was bad and the crimped in was also bad. I'm gonna go ahead and attach this back to the solenoid and we know we have power going back to the solenoid through the key switch and through the M core as well. All right, so we're starting to make some progress. I went ahead and got a jumper wire here, this ground wire. It's going to the 48 volt uh, pack ground, run to the solenoid because I don't have the controller hooked up just yet. Normally the controller will send ground to the solenoid. So I just got it going there just to test the system out. It's in run here. That's off, that's run. And once we attach the blue and the green wire here together, the solenoid will clip. So that's letting us know that all of this stuff is working properly now. Uh, we've got to make sure the controller is starting to work next. I'm going to put it in tow mode here. I do not have a uh, resistor. My local golf cart shop doesn't have any in stock. I don't know why that's was be like just a cheap part to keep a lot of them in stock, but whatever, they don't have it. So either I'm gonna have to rob one from another golf cart or something, cause I don't wanna hook the, well, anyways, I, I was gonna say, I don't wanna hook the controller up, but to begin with the controller was hooked up with a diode. So I don't know exactly how that's working out. That controller may be shot, I don't know, at this point. But we're getting some progress made, and that's what I'm talking about. 
Went ahead and plugged the controller back in. I don't have a resistor. I'm going to get a resistor. It did have a resistor to begin with, so I'm almost like, screw it, let's see if anything happened. Uh, it's in run. I have the blue wire here and the black wire, which should have been orange, uh, hooked up. That is for forward or reverse, I can't remember. Okay, that's there. I'm gonna hook this, I'm gonna blue and green up here. That's gonna be like the key switch. And let's see if we get anything. It looked like it wanted to roll. I'm not gonna lie. It looked like it wanted to roll. Let's yeah. So far we haven't put any money in this thing yet. I've changed it. That should be Ford. Right, so blue is reverse, gray is Ford. Let's see if it happens anything here. It's running. It feels like the brakes are dragging because, watch this. I can't get over this. Cannot get over this. This is, a, this is awesome. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the accelerator. It's gonna go backwards and it's just gonna stop by itself. So I think something's going on with the brakes and well, we have us a running golf cart. I like me get over it because as the listing said, the motor could have been bad, the controller could have been bad, but this is nice. So far, like I said, we haven't put any money into it. We just ran through the wiring and it works like it should, I believe. So super stoked, I'm not gonna lie to you, stoked. All right, guys, let's do a little update here. Um, Sunday, got the resistor in, put that on, installed. Got all of my harness into some split loom there. Tried to clean it up as best as I could. I replaced those two smaller wires with these right here from a president. Got them zip tied in here. All of these wires right here are for the tail lights. So everything looks much uh, cleaner in the rear, I think. I replaced this right here cable. Um, the one that was on here was real long, kind of janky. Replace that. This is what everything looks like in split loom. This is a positive and ground wire here for the headlight and tail light switch. This is the split loom here, going underneath the cart, tow run switch. F and R switch there. It still hasn't came in yet, so that's there. There's the switch here, main on off switch. But so far, the wiring looks a lot better. I'm a lot happier with this right here now. I did change some batteries in here. I changed that battery over there, switched it around, switched this right here battery around. This right here looks more uniform now. I like that. I plan tomorrow. I'm pressure washing it and trying to get this clean. This is the Admiral motor here. See there? Can't really tell which one it is. The MOTA4 is what that is. That was on this golf cart. So, yep, there it is. But with that being said, um, that's where we're at right now.